Hi everybody and welcome back to the Emory Security YouTube channel. My name is Evan Isaac and today we'll be looking at section one of the API Security 2025 CTF. So I semi-participated in the CTF when it was happening. I ended up ranking 30th or something along those lines. I found mainly unintended pathways for most of the challenges that I did end up solving. So this time around, we're gonna go through all the different kinds of challenges that they have in store. And now this is my second time recording this because the first time my audio didn't work. Hopefully this is the last time that I have to record this episode because I've tried now three different times. And uh, yeah, so we'll see how this goes. This is again, section one, which is shadow APIs and the first challenge is undocumented undocumented welcome to the secure notes app our developers have created a robust note-taking application with proper authentication and authorization this challenge presents a web application with full functional api however there might be more to api than meets the eye and there's a url here so we'll navigate over to it we have a login page as well as a registration page so we can do something along the lines of emory security and we'll do one and we'll just put it as test one two three bang we can see we do get registration successful so now we can log into the application as such and we can see what happens here and it looks like we're logged in. It looks like a standard note-taking application. The first thing that you can see is there is a role set to user. Now, this can mean a few different things. This can mean that we're going to be dealing with a mass assignment vulnerability, which relates to how you can abuse, let's say, privilege escalation going from a user to an administrator. But for now, we have this create notes. So we're going to just do a basic XSS payload and see if it works. And all this is doing is this is using an image tag. It's throwing an error because source equals X will always result in an error. And this on attribute will send off an alert one pop-up or JavaScript alert box to our screen if it does execute. And we could save this and we could see that it doesn't look like there's any cross-site scripting here. We could also try to refresh the notes and take a look over at Burp Suite to see if maybe there's something here that we can work with. But like you know now there is nothing here we see that there is an identifier and we do retrieve the notes but there's no way that we can go about bypassing or manipulating the data where we can see any other id besides our own we also see that there is a profile with our role the username as well as the message and it says welcome back emory security one so maybe we'll have to take a look at this we also see that there is an authorization bearer token where if you look at the payload section, we could see that it does say Emory security one, as well as the role being user. We may have to manipulate the JWT as well, but for now, we're going to leave this alone. Let's head back on over to the application and go into the page source. Most of the time, whenever you're dealing with a CTF, there's going to be some form of hidden JavaScript lying around. And looking at the bottom, we see that we have an, an API min.js file as well as an app min.js file. So we can come over to the app and see what is going on here. And it looks like nothing too crazy. It just looks like a lot of HTML JavaScript. So there's nothing really here that we can work with. Let's go over to the API min.js. And we see that there is a few different things. The first is there is the content type that we have to work with, which in our case is going to be application JSON. We can see that there's different kinds of URLs or endpoints that is. So here we have slash register, we have slash login. We can see that the base URL is slash API. And if you don't know what a base URL is, it essentially means anything after the domain. So let's say emorysecurity.com, anything after that slash is going to have to be slash API slash blank. So in our case, it's going to be slash API slash login slash API slash register, so on and so forth. If we go back, we can see that that's exactly what it's using slash API slash login as the endpoint, as well as the host name being this. So we can head on back over here and we do see that there is a debug token, which is a JWT as well as a debug endpoint. And we can take this debug endpoint, we can head on over to Burp Suite, and we could see if we can maybe play around with it. So we'll head on to Repeater, 
and we'll modify this to let's say let's just try API debug and let's paste in our new JWT and we can see inside of the JWT there is the admin with the role debugger so when we send this off we retrieve the flag flag hidden endpoints are not secure so let's copy the flag and let's paste it into the first challenge and let's move on to the second challenge I don't know why this is not working oh cannot determine your team that's funny I must not have registered yet one second Alrighty, and there we go. I just had to add a team to the dashboard. So let's move on to the second challenge, which is welcome back to the Secure Notes app. After our security team discovered the previous vulnerability, we updated the application to make it more secure. The debug token no longer provides direct access to the flag endpoint. Can you navigate through these layers of security to find the flag? And here we have a different URL. So we can get rid of this. And because we've already done something very similar, I'm assuming that there's going to be another JavaScript, which there is, and accessing it, we do see that there is another debug token. So using this debug token, we can come over here and let's go to proxy. We're going to want to grab this new URL. So we can grab this, send it off to repeater, and we're going to just add an authorization bearer token. So authorization, we'll do bearer. And then we'll paste it in here. So looking at the script again, it looks like, again, base URL is slash API. And we see that we have two new URLs here. The first is slash admin. The second is slash debug. And the debug is looking for debug colon true in order to get it activated. So let's see if that works. So let's head back on over to Burp. And a neat trick about Burp is if you want to change a GET request to a POST request, you can simply right click and click change request method. And what that'll do is that'll create a POST. It'll add the content type here, which in our case is going to be application JSON. Again, we could see that through somewhere here. There we go right here, the application JSON. So we know that this is going to be this form of API. Sometimes it's a form based API. Sometimes it's JSON, but most of the time it is JSON. So we'll head on over here. We'll do post and we'll do slash API slash debug. And we will also add a debug parameter down here. So colon debug, and then we'll set it to true. When we click on send, it says debug mode activated. System logs are now available at logs slash system log. So we can head on over here and again, we will change our request method and modify this to be logs slash system dot log. So when we come on over here, we can see that the server has started. We see that there's a backup that's scheduled, that some users have lo logged in successfully, such as the admin, that there are user login fails. And at the bottom here, we do have admin token generated which is, you guessed it, an admin token. As you can see right here in the Base64D code, username admin role is set to admin. So we could take this and we can now paste it into our pane or into our request. And we can modify this to say slash API slash admin, because if you saw inside of the JavaScript, we could see that there is an admin panel right here at this endpoint. So clicking on send, we retrieve the second flag. So flag multi-step token escalation vuln. So I'll head back on over here and paste it in to our dashboard. And that's all for the first section. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, please let me know in the comment section down below. If you have any questions, please feel free to hit me up on Discord or leave it down in the comments down below. And I will see you in the next one. So please like, subscribe, and take care.